Good day, nerds, and welcome to episode 55 of the Nerd Cantina Show. I'm your host, Ken, joined by our co-host, Steve, and we're going to do our little uh, Christmas episode of the weekly recap. And we're going to begin with some entertainment talk around the latest trailers that have released, some quick thoughts uh, on Star Wars, and then we're going to have a conversation on some articles that have come out that have proven that video games are not linked or associated with depression. Then we're going to move into some tech news uh, with Life Labs getting hacked, U.S. Navy bans TikTok. I'm going to give my thoughts on another documentary uh, relating to uh, AI and how it's making it easier to kill us all. And then we have lots of space conversations uh, with the Boeing Starliner, Amazon's Kuiper, as well as the Space Force being created and uh, signed into law. Stick around. Enjoy the show. Calling back all nerds. Nerds! All right, and welcome back, nerds, to episode 55 of the Nerd Cantina Show. And I'll Merry just Christmas. say Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy so we're recording. Holiday, happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa <laughs> in this bitch. Whatever you celebrate, it's a time to be happy and spend some time with family and uh, give a bunch of nerd hugs. So uh, for us, it's a Merry Christmas for, for whatever it is for you. Happy holidays, guys. Yeah, we're recording this a couple days before, but uh, we'll, we'll have this thing edited out and released on Christmas Day. And uh, so hopefully for all of you... With those anxiety-ridden drives out to some potentially miserable experience, uh, you get to, to maybe catch up on some news and uh, and get a chuckle on your way out there. Yeah, pound out the episode, have some nice uh, tidbits of information to drop on the family. You know, seem a little smarter this Christmas than than, than you usually do. <laughs> but uh, let's uh, let's get get right into some of these topics here and. Uh, the first one that we we always like to to cover and give our initial thoughts on some uh, some of these movies coming up. And last week we talked about a bunch of trailers, but we missed one uh, that came out while we were recording, and uh, and that was the Top Gun trailer. Yeah, man. And uh, once again, what twenty something, thirty, almost thirty years later, I got the fucking <laughs> need for speed, bro. I got the need for speed. Like that thing looks dope. It it uh, it looks beautifully Top Gun. Uh, it, it's it's got all the right cheese uh, that, that a Top Gun movie needs. It, I mean, they're essentially just modifying it, the the plot slightly, but you still get shirtless men on the beach. You still you, you're still somebody dies. There's a funeral in the trailer. Cross somebody rockets dies. whizzing down runways. <laughs> yeah, I I swear one of the people in there has got to be like Goose's son or something because he looks you, just like Goose. I want I want a Meg Ryan. Like I gotta have a Meg Ryan. I gotta have a Val Kilmer. You know, like I want I want Goose's son in there. Like I want I want yeah Maverick to get all the feels. <laughs> like, it's, like this movie could be so good on so many levels. Like. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited, it, and it's you know it's I'm sure going to be just like the original Top Gun, and the 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 flying is going to make no sense. Yeah, big the tactics going to make no sense. Big old Navy propaganda movie, but it's going to be yeah, <laughs> Navy propaganda. And supposedly, uh, I've seen a bunch of stuff that like uh, Tom Cruise is is in like real oh, jets real, this yeah, time, like, and like, like it is he like, got he strapped is pulling, to a fucking plane for Mission Impossible. If you don't think he wanted yeah. to get in the cockpit for these, you're fucking crazy. And like he is actually supposed to like sitting through what are like legit like eight G turns and pulls on these these aircraft. No, in the one trailer you could see that it's it's Tom Cruise with his cheeks hitting them windows, but <laughs> like you could definitely tell it's him. Which so, yeah, I got no, mad love, you know, as much as I would love to make fun of Tom Cruise and and uh bask in his age, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> he gives no fucks, man. He gives no fucks. It's it's them Zetons in him or whatever the fuck. <laughs> but he is he is just aging really well and taking it in stride, man. Because I man, I don't think I could do that goddamn air shit like without shitting my pants or puking on something. <laughs> no, yeah, he he's uh he's definitely an impressive actor when it comes to all of what he puts himself through in there's order no, to, there's to no get bigger. authentic shots. Keanu is the only actor I could put on the same level as like dedication that you know willing to to go that extra mile to to train and and be you know as immersive in the film as he can. Like it's the only one that comes to my mind. 
yeah so that that uh that trailer looks looks good i mean i'm definitely gonna be be one to see top gun at some point in time because it's uh looks i say it looks great so man it's my entire on. childhood like it's, it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's my entire childhood the other trailer that that came out a couple of days ago it, it was uh this that movie tenet yeah well i don't know what nolan, it's about christopher nolan like another crazy like inception type movie um it, it looks like it's somebody cracked uh time travel or something or like some version of it because it it just looks like you know in the video games when you make a mistake and you're able to hit like l1 and it rewinds it and lets you do it over it's it's basically that in movie form that's <laughs> like, what it, it kind of looks yeah, like I, it is someone someone cracked the 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 15 second skip back thing in in, in space time yeah, it's. I mean, that's what it, it looks like. Yeah, half the trailer is things going backwards. You know, you got boats in the ocean going backwards, people getting pulled backwards on the on the ground and stuff like that. So, it definitely uh, it it looks interesting. I I don't know what it follows. Uh, as far as I don't know if there's like a book or or whatever else. Uh, maybe some people uh, in the group know what this this movie is about. I don't, but the trailer absolutely looks interesting. So. Uh, Good job, Christopher Nolan. Good trailer. Hopefully, we'll, we'll go check that one out. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give Christopher Nolan a shot on anything he does. He's not 100% successful on everything, but he deserves a quick glance. Another so new releases uh, that have come out in this last week, and something that's been talked a lot about in our group uh, the, over at the nerdcantina.com forward slash community within our, our Facebook group is uh, the, the Witcher show on Netflix. Have you gotten a chance to check it out yet? I watched the first episode. Um, I've you know with Christmas coming, I've been really swamped trying to make sure everybody gets what you know has a Merry Christmas. Um, so I've only gotten to watch one, the first episode, and it to me it does have some promise. Um, I did feel a little out of the loop. Uh, I think I think if you have if you've played the video games, you'll you'll know a little bit more. I think it's it really does cater to those Witcher fans. But it wasn't. I wasn't so out of it that I wasn't interested and aren't going to keep up with the story and find out what's going on. Like the uh, the the color scale on on it is really good. It's really gritty. Um, the fight scenes were phenomenal. Uh, I'm not even a big Henry Cavill fan, and he looks great in it. I think he does. So far, he's done a really good job. So I'm here for it. I'll, I'll pound it out, especially with a lot of TV shows on winter break and stuff like this. I, I should be able to get through it really quick. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something that people are talking about within the group. I have yet to to watch it. It's definitely on my list to get to. Uh, I've just been yeah buried behind Christmas prep and uh and birthday parties for for my daughter i'm not gonna lie either i i pounded out the the last season of miss Maisel too i give no fucks <laughs> you say whatever you want about me that show is fucking great like so i, I was on a miss Maisel kick <laughs> <laughs> but uh the uh the witcher looks looks good so if you're if you're watching or listening to this and you're not a part of the facebook group or you haven't checked it out there is a discussion thread in the facebook group where uh where people are are having their conversations and full thoughts on the uh the show itself now so go ahead and uh and Join the group over again over at the nerdcantina.com forward slash community and uh and get involved in the conversation for uh for some Witcher talk. And then um as everybody knows, Rise of Skywalker came out this week. I gave not even kind of a review because I just didn't it's hard to do it spoiler free or <laughs> or have you know not like go into detail on anything. So I just kind of gave my initial reaction on uh on a YouTube video and I think I summed up I, th- I think I did a pretty good job of summing up the feel of the movie without giving any kind of details or or plot points or any. I didn't give anything away. I just kind of gave my my tone at walking out of the theater and uh, used a, a pretty decent analogy. So if uh, if you want, go check that out. It's uh it's up on uh, our YouTube channel. <laughs> Um, and I think we're gonna try to do a spoil another spoiler filled uh, Patreon episode um, sometime this week to to post up on the Patreon site. So for as little as a dollar, like just one measly buck, <laughs> <laughs> you can you can hear our thoughts, our complete thoughts on the sky rise of Skywalker, and, and join in on that discussion. 
uh, through our Patreon page. Um, I'm finding it a little disheartening how hard it is to get people to part away with a, with a dollar. For literally $12 a year, you can support our show. And it is, uh, it's slow rolling. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty slow rolling. You know, I, I, I did get to, to Star Wars as well on early Saturday morning, nine o'clock in the morning, uh, a Saturday show. And, you know, we'll, we can talk about it with spoiler free and, uh, or full of spoilers later. But, I don't know, initial spoiler free thoughts for, for mine were, I don't know, it was entertaining. And I could see, I could see why it's got, you know, it, it has, terribly mixed reviews and uh in whether it's critics or fan opinion it, this one is extremely split on how people's experiences were with the movie yeah, i think it's all gonna it all depends on what your expectations were and what kind of star wars fan you it, are. And i agree like the mix the mixture of both is per, is pretty much going to determine how you feel about this movie yeah so we'll uh We'll we'll talk more about the plot holes and some of the specifics of uh, of the movie uh, in the Patreon discussion. So uh, join us over there when that releases. Uh, if you're a Patreon uh, subscriber, you'll you'll get that email alert and uh, and and the 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 link to go ahead and listen to that. And if not, just sign up for a buck. <laughs> All right, but to to stay in a, a little more on the entertainment side, uh, we there was a, an article that came out last week. Uh, that was discussing some some research that has recently come out that has shown that video games uh, are are not linked to depression as, as many people kind of talking points and headlines would, would tend to, to have you believe. A lot of people think that you know t- video games is this antisocial behavior that that leads you down some some path uh, towards depression, and the science doesn't support it. Yeah, um, and it. it- and if you are a gamer or, or in the know, uh, you you can kind of piece this together yourself. You know, it, what they're stating is, is that social networking and television are more drivers towards depression because, one, the Internet can be a horribly savage place. <laughs> so it, there's no surprise that, that the Internet will will make you depressed. Like, it's, like that's that's a given. You know, but also how um, in our days of binge watching TV, you can really, you know, isolate yourself in a room and just watch 30 episodes of Friends and not have any contact with the outside world and, and just kind of bask in your, your negative thoughts and, and things like that to, to, you know, further get into that depression hole to whereas video games, I, th- I want to say they said some 80% of video games played now are socially interactive, you know, so 80% of people or of video games being played are actually in a community. You have to work well with others. You have to, you know, communicate. And, and this is actually counterintuitive to, to what most people think is associated with heavy gamers that you're locked in a room by yourself and you're just isolating yourself from society. You're not isolating yourself from society. You may be isolating yourself from your family. You know, fuck you, dad, and slam the door <laughs> and, and just go play Call of Duty for six hours. You know, but as far as it, it leads to depression, um, no, you 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 get to, to communicate with like-minded people, uh, common interests, things like that. And that actually does help, you know, um, the, counteract the depression. Yeah, and I think uh, it, it's, it's a weird thing. It's still even weird. Uh, I think for even our, our age group, uh, as we've we've grown up, grown up with video games and largely internet uh, to to some extent, but like the the concept that real life in person friendships are becoming more and more meaningless as as you we go along, like the these internet based friendships that exist through through games and everything else are just as enriching uh, and important to an individual psyche today as as having real life relationships and the the video game community provides actually a healthy approach towards that it's not the the social media networks it's not the the twitter trolls it's it's people that they actually have shared experience with that they're actually engaging with in in conversation it's a different group uh when you interact with people through video game let's be real it, it for some people and for a lot of people it's 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 hard to make real life friends you know you're you're basically in a lottery of 
people in close proximity that have shared interests that you can tolerate, right? Like, you know, you, you're just, you're just kind of bouncing around off the walls of society. And if you meet someone really cool that you can hang out with at church, at work, at a school function, at wherever, wherever it may be, you know, that's kind of like a, a lucky thing. You know, I don't, I don't know too many people who have, you know, over a dozen like really good friends. We all have eight hundred to a thousand Facebook friends, and we eight hundred to a thousand people that we, we talk to. <laughs> yeah, I all think right. I got like we don't all have eight hundred to a thousand Facebook yeah. friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to say, well, maybe not you, but people in the younger generation, I think, are in that thousand range. I would say the average millennial probably has in, in around there. You know, especially as as you age. Um, but you, you, those aren't like friends, you know what I mean? They're not people that you're going to call when you need help to move. They're not, they're not people that are going to be there, you know, when, when you're going through tough times. I, I think the people that actually have those friends are in, in the handful and how you get that handful is, is pretty random, but online you do have more access to not have uh, a physical presence with more people like that, but you can find um, meaningful relationships through the internet because the the odds of you meeting someone that falls into that criteria of being a good friend are are way higher when, once you once you yeah and especially there. when you start right you start at a at a base point like a video game that you're interested in and the people you meet there at least you have one point of commonality. You have you have one point to to start from. Again, you have some level of shared experience, some level of shared interest, uh, and then the the more you you tend to interact through that, it's it still can create good friendships. It avoids isolation. It avoids uh, some of these other issues that that can result in increased uh, likelihood of depression. So, to so the extent somebody tells you. Well, I, I still I still talk to a lot of my World of Warcraft friends, you know, that I haven't played World of Warcraft in five years, six years, and I still talk to these guys. And and most of the people I play video games with online are people that live within a twenty minute drive of my house, but we're just all busy and lazy, so we don't get to see each other all the time. So video games have been our like hangout. The next time somebody brings up uh, to you that this is such an unhealthy behavior, or you know, again, if you're if you're raising kids or you have kids in the future and you're, you're concerned about these things as being some some terribly unhealthy behavior, uh, there are definitely ways to do this that uh, that are within the healthy bounds that do enrich friendships that do uh, kind of enrich the social experience of an individual. It's not something to be to be abstained from, uh, and we're we're now starting to see some some research backed studies uh, that are that are proving this. And this uh, this one was was a study with over three thousand participants, uh, carried a, a a lot of good science, good weight behind it uh, to to really hammer home this idea that hey, video games are not linked to depression and not in the way we think. Yeah, I'm sure our f- good friend uh, Dr. Rachel Colwert is uh, really subscribing to yeah, this absolutely. study. All right, now now we can move on to uh, I guess to, to first some tech adjacent stuff with uh, another another cyber attack or, or issue. This one's interesting. Uh, this first one that we have with uh, Life Labs. So Life Labs, a company in, in Canada, a uh, medical company in Canada that ended up getting hacked and losing 15 million users uh, data, uh, which also uh, medical test results and medical data, uh, all stolen through a, a hacker approach. And what makes this one unique is that, the yes, the hackers had a cyber intrusion into their company, taking a, a ton of information. Again, 15 million individuals. Uh, all of the data they took was from 2016 or older. But the hackers took the data and then immediately communicated to the company letting them know that the, that they've exploited them and then holding for ransom uh that they would give them the data back if uh, if a ransom was paid and the company paid it yeah and the company paid it and then they and they paid know, that shit notified yeah, the authorities and everything else but they paid a ransom in order to recover the 15 million uh users data that's got to be lost money right like uh, and and like what what makes it it's, so this isn't like a kidnapping where you know they kidnap a person and then, <laughs> you, and get, you the get the person, person back, back right like how do we know that they didn't dump all that data onto the dark web anyways and 
you know, like they, they said in the article that they did do some research. They were looking for it on the dark web. They couldn't find it. But, I mean, this it could be still on a USB somewhere on a removable hard drive. They're just going to dump this shit later. Like, yeah, how do you know? That, that was my thought, too. I was just like, I, um, so maybe it was such a small number as far as like corporate small. You know, <laughs> you're talking about uh, the amount of money that, uh, that corporations can put out to these things. Maybe what they had to pay was so small that they just figured even if these people are lying and they ask for more money a year from now. I want to say, wasn't it like I didn't five see million? It. Wasn't it like I five didn't see million the dollar dollars? amount I in, don't want to say in, the, in any of the articles I read, but no, I thought I, I thought I had a, 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 a but you got to assume again, it's that that money's just lost. What stops these people from calling you thirty days from now and just saying, "Hey, remember that last time you paid us? <laughs> we still have it." <laughs> yeah, we got all that information still. So we're gonna need we're gonna need another. It's uh, it's definitely an interesting case. Yeah. Uh, this this one being. Uh, a little more unique because one, the size of it, 15 million users data is, I mean, that is a significant breach. Uh, and, we're, and we're talking about medical data uh, being lost. And then uh, apparently this is a thing, apparently holding these companies and <laughs> holding uh, or asking for, for ransom in order to not release the, the items. I wonder how much this happens, right? This, I doubt this is the first time. How many times has this happened that you, yeah. How many times oh, has this been paid out and, it and a company the that doesn't That's for sure. call the authorities or they just kind of sweep it under the rug in order to preserve uh, their their own image uh, and their own interests? Curious. I have not heard of this strategy yet, so I definitely wanted to, to bring it to the canteen air today. Yeah, this, uh, right, the, nec- this uh, the next topic is, uh, it's a follow-up to just one we talked about, I think it was two weeks ago, we, we talked about the, uh, the, the top general in, in the Marine Corps uh, talking about educating service members on not using uh, TikTok and, and why we need to educate them in the, the kind of really the threats of this Chinese owned company and essentially data mining US citizens, military members for as much information as they can. Uh, and we have no idea where that information is going. And then now we get uh, the, the the Navy this week has banned TikTok uh, from, from any government issued uh, devices and, and phones. I think this is a no-brainer. I don't. <laughs> I almost think they should expand it to to personal devices. I mean, it's hard to. I mean, I, I know we're getting into murky waters of freedoms and and stuff like that, but I, I think once you sign up for the military, you've kind of already yeah. came to terms with limiting your own freedom of life and what you can do. You know, I think that comes when you sign on that dotted line. You know, so. I would, you know, as far as they can ban people from using it on the military devices, you know, that's one thing. But, you know, you got a bunch of dudes, you know, with their own personal cell phones, you know, still probably using these things and and, um, sending emails or, or, you know, whatever the case may be, they're they're still going to get some data and and they're going to try to use that against our national security. Um so I just, yeah, it, w- this is going to be really weird how this plays out over the next decade. You know, 2020s are going to be really interesting in um, what companies we allow to to have to be a part of our 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 business, our commerce, or, or our part of our society, or our life based on. The, the nations that are developing these these apps and the, the countries that are developing these apps. I mean, we already talked about, um, you know, where we're going to store our data. We're, we're not letting China, you know, store yeah. um, U.S. Yeah, data it, anymore. It, I, I don't um, know. I don't know how this wasn't this banned already when you look at a major issue. It, it says it was on like government issued phones. Why are you playing on TikTok or Facebook or whatever else on a taxpayer paid for a device? <laughs> like this, this, this should have this should have already been a no brainer. I'm pretty sure this should have already been explicitly banned if it if it wasn't. <laughs> I, I don't know how, uh, but yeah, the concept of yeah, if if it's coming out of my taxes, you get a walkie, you get a walkie talkie. It's what you get. We need to go back to the next El chirp days. <laughs> just just chirping everybody. Whether they can ban it across the service. It, it potentially might get to a point where they they can do those things and not necessarily you know oftentimes the military service can't ban individual behavior but what they can do is just classify things in a way where you know you already can't bring smartphones or smartwatches or whatever else into certain classified areas whether that's even like congress you know the the 
Republicans got in trouble a couple of weeks ago for bringing phones into closed sessions and whatever else. So you can already de- ban certain devices and classify all military bases as GPS sensitive areas. And you, have to, you cannot come into these areas with any location tracking devices or well, at least many certain areas, especially certain bases, uh, you know, taking it onto places like ships or deployments, taking your cell phones or taking, you know, there's, there are ways to ban these things when you change certain classifications. So it's, it's potentially a, a move forward or a necessity, uh, a move that might have to be necessary. Uh, again, as these things become definitely more intrusive, it's easier to then, it's really not that hard to scrape people's Facebook profiles and Facebook and, and information to find out who's in the military and then find out where they're located. And well, then what, what yeah. American company is going to come up and just rip TikTok off and make click clack or some <laughs> shit you know <laughs> like, like just make a new one that's ran by americans for americans and yeah. and let's let's keep it moving like let's go along with uh we can keep it in the military area as uh as i just can't help myself lately watching these ai documentaries <laughs> and uh I, I caught another one uh this this last <laughs> week and it was the title of it was ai makes it easier to kill us all so i was i was hooked i just had to watch it had to see it. It was a short one. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no clickbait involved in there. It was a short no one. It was only like twenty minutes. Uh, the the links up on uh, the show notes here at the nerdcantina dot com slash show fifty five. And uh, it it's honestly it's it is fascinating. And I'll just talk about some of the the scarier elements when we talk about the the AI. They showed these little like micro drones that already exist. Like they showed uh, people demonstrating that, uh, them. Yeah, I've, I've the, heard like, of these. Like little kamikaze micro drones that they could just... <laughs> kamikaze <laughs> that's that's essentially what it is. Like the, it's literally a guy who pulls this the drone, which is smaller than the palm of his hand, and he just chucks it into the air. The drone activates, it flies around, and then through AI, it's scanned, located the target... And then just flew itself into creating a hole in the skull of of this dummy. And what was it? Was it like actual human, like humanoid skull, like, like like, or was it just like a mannequin head that it put a hole in? So like, it was like a it was like a a, a mannequin head. Um, but they they discussed that like that that technology, it, like it's well known that it it, it exists, right? To well, to weaponize was, these little mini the, drones. Uh, this was the premise of that. Um, you know, there's a, a movie, the right? movie. Yeah. So the, one of the movies I reviewed, um, with, uh, Gerard Butler, what's, I can't remember the title of it, but it's that fallen. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, so that was it. Like military drones that had like C4 attached to them and there's just thousand drones in the air hitting targets, blowing, you know, like it. And then when I did watch that, I was just like, oh shit, like, Yup, this is this is the future. Like, yup, well, this is definitely the future. And and this documentary talks a, a fair amount of this is about how that that technology is. It's a hundred percent real. Uh, these these drones are really easy and cheap to make. You could with with very little effort uh, make them. But the the AI sensors exist to where you could throw them up in the air and you can target it. You can tell these the computers that you could put on these drones and you could tell them like. You will target men between the age of eighteen and sixty, and you will tar- and it'll it'll go out and it'll scan individuals, and then it can just autonomously a- attack targets that meet certain criteria. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna trademark a, a screenplay of a AI serial killer. Some <laughs> some some computer just goes sentient and then you know goes off the deep end from reading 4chan forums <laughs> and just becomes <laughs> becomes some AI serial killer and this is what he does like it's that's insane like the, there's they've they've all there's there's a couple of rap songs and there's always been like a rap theme of like six million ways to die like i think we just we <laughs> we, we we put that that number on a, a a multiple that i don't think we can scale anymore we added at least another couple million to that number <laughs> i don't think six million is is the the new trend i th- think with ai and robots and stuff we've added a couple couple new ones to the list yeah it, it's the the drone stuff is like it is scary but again drones aren't necessarily ai but it's it's what you can put in the technology you can put into simple things like little micro drones or larger drones uh that that you can essentially program them to 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 be pretty selective and it, this th- this documentary makes a case that like yeah nuclear warfare 
you know, would be absolutely devastating, but, but well, it's, it's there's got a lot of problems. people that have a big fear of drones. So we have a cantina member and a friend of mine, uh, Dave, and he's, he loves his drone. Like he, he went live putting up like his Christmas gifts, Christmas decorations on his house. And the drone was like across the street, 30 feet in the air. He's, you can see him on the roof, putting <laughs> the Santa up and all the Christmas lights. And he brings the drone to like his kids soccer games and stuff yeah. like that. And, and I guess the, the last game he was at, man, a bunch of parents went like ape shit on him for, for, for having a drone at his kid's soccer game. <laughs> and we're just uh. like, this isn't right. Like, like this is an invasion of privacy. Like that. It was like, man, what's the difference if I'm holding a GoPro, if I got a GoPro strapped yeah. to my forehead, or if I just send it on a robot 30 feet in the air so I could get a better view. Like, and I guess, yeah. He he caused a major uproar at one of his kids' like uh, sports functions because people just can't can't get around this new you know it's because it's all boomers and and Gen Xers at these games. Yeah, and everybody's I heard some story about like a, a, a drone flying outside somebody's window and and, and recording somebody <laughs> changing or whatever else. So yeah, people people associate this with being way more the, invasive. The drone animal house scenario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the the documentary it definitely paints a grim picture of of the drones of what AI can do as far as weaponizing these things and and making it fully autonomous. Um, there's also they they show some Russian tanks that are 100 percent autonomous now that don't require anybody to to be in it and they can actually do all of its own targeting if you so choose to, yeah, to I mean, let we it. Yeah, got self driving trucks, self driving cars. I mean, you know that everything in the military. Because because that's always the argument for why we shouldn't go to war. Should we send our children across the seas to to fight these battles? Well, the minute Congress could just say, no, we're not going to send any humans. Like we're not going to we're not going to send your your child across to to Iran to fight this war. We're just going to send a bunch of robots. The the uh, the backlash from from you know the citizens is going to be far less. You know I. I you're going to have a lot of fiscally conservative people that might not like that idea, but I mean, it. We're good. That I think that's one of the ultimate goals is they want to limit actual feet on the ground, and when you do so, it makes it a lot easier to justify some of these needless and endless military incursions that that we've been going on over the last two decades. Yeah. The the whole documentary, the purpose of the documentary, like it, it does show again these these autonomous tanks and these drone systems and uh, other ways that AI can weaponize technology that already exists. Really, the point of the documentary, though, that it tries to hammer home to- at the end, it paints this scary picture. It's just the fact that how inept human beings are. Like yeah, we're done. Manage, we at, well, so at, like dumb. managing these things and regulating these things that, like, currently, uh, you know, in the Geneva, uh, Geneva, and during these, you know, international body conventions and stuff like that, they're still debating on the terminology of what a fully autonomous weapon system is and what equals a fully autonomous whatever else. Like, we can't even get to the point of like having treaties that ban these things or talking about actual development we know countries are doing it and we can't yeah, actually yeah, even... it's gonna have to be treated like chemical weapons yeah right? but, the, like... but the problem is is the people who are representing the nations or whatever else like they they don't understand it they can't speak about it well uh the, the few people who are, are received with skepticism and then it just shows like it shows panels and meetings at, with the un where people are just debating again over like the vocabulary being used and they can't come to an agreement on even what is a fully autonomous weapon system and how it, so we are not even getting to the point of regulating it and yeah. essentially old, the documentary old, old saying white people suck we're like, yeah. old, old white people suck and so it's saying that we're, we're really <laughs> we're really 10 years away probably from even having a an understanding of the definition but we're three years away from the weapon systems, right? We're like we're we're going to constantly be so far behind because the technology is happening so quickly, and we we don't we're not even equipped well, with dealing is, with it. Well, and this is this is what's frustrating too about our our politics. Just to dip my big toe into the the political pool real quick, when you, when you watch these debates, you know the front runners are all in their seventies, some in their eighties, yeah, like. 
these are not the people we should be relying on to to face these problems like you know i mean it, it it's so frustrating as as someone that's about to turn 40 that is is nearing the age of becoming one of these old white people that i hate <laughs> so while i'm still in the window of not being the old white person and still being a relatively middle-aged white person i would like a shot at having a say so in how we we take our society into the future and instead we are we are either being dragged in one direction by millennials who have great intentions but but no experience as to how the world works and and you know they have they have they have great aspirations and and things like that but some are so unrealistic and then you have the other side of boomers and in even past boomers still running for office that are just so stuck in the stone ages i mean you got you got people still talking about record players on in debate <laughs> floors like record fucking players man i know vinyl's coming back but for real man come on <laughs> yeah th- this is one of the, the again the main points of the documentary is that fully autonomous weapon systems they're here they already exist uh the prevalence is unknown we don't know what these countries are, are necessarily doing with it but we know that they're developing it we know that we're developing it uh we know that civilian companies are developing these uh the the ai that's going to be used to fuel these things uh and internationally even in the u.s we're, we're not prepared to regulate this we're not prepared to, to manage this and uh the the technology's it's not only gonna it's not only here but it's gonna be cheap it's gonna be cheap and easy to use and uh, to to program so it might be something people uh, hopefully hopefully get behind and understand that the scary thing is and even the documentary talks about it is no matter what we're never getting to Terminator on Terminator warfare. Right, like that's that's not how well, wars I mean, are won. If I had to put if I had to put my money down, not that I don't care about climate change, but if I had to put my money down on something, it's robots that are going to wipe the humans off this planet. <laughs> it ain't going to be it ain't going to be climate change. Like climate change is a real problem. I do think we need to combat it, uh, but I do honestly believe if I had to put money in Vegas on what's going to wipe out the human race. It'll be robots, bro. Like way faster, way faster than climate change. <laughs> I I don't necessarily climate change is the slow bet, the slow long game. You know, robots are creeping up on us really fucking fast, man. <laughs> really fucking fast. Well, uh, time will tell, and uh, hopefully, I'm not here for any of it. I uh, I hope on my deathbed I get to watch the robot invasion. Like if I'm, <laughs> I, I like I'm gonna be you know I'm hoping I'm like 82 with some kind of like crazy disease that's eating my body away and just point me at the window and let me watch these robots mow everybody over and like <laughs> whatever. I don't know, that's that's my goal. <laughs> I, I, I want to live long enough just to see it. All right, well. If you want to watch uh, watch this and see some of the scary tech that the documentary highlights, go to uh, go to the nerdcantina.com slash show 55, uh, and it'll take you to our, our show notes link where you can see see this YouTube uh, documentary that, uh, that I was just recapping there. All right. Next, let's move into some space for a little bit, as uh, and then we'll, we'll get people off to their Christmases. So we've got... Uh, first off... This last week, we uh, we we did have uh, an important test for NASA, and uh, and that was the Boeing Starliner, and we we talk a lot in the show just because you know it's it's easy to talk about SpaceX and Elon because he's always in the news, um, but what we see is government wise, there's more money from NASA put into Boeing as the next platform for s- space exploration. Uh, Boeing has received uh, almost five billion dollars from NASA to develop the Starliner, whereas it's only uh, it's less than three billion given to uh, to SpaceX. So, Starliner uh, is is attempting to to make the next uh, platform for crewed space missions, uh, and they had a, a big test this week, which was an autonomous test, uh, an unmanned test of their Starliner system. Uh, out to orbit, it was supposed to dock with the International Space Station, uh, and then return to to prove that the Starliner is going to be able to to get 
astronauts to space and to the ISS. And it it failed miserably this last week. I don't I don't take these stories like as a big like necessarily failure. I mean, who attempts to do something crazy and then nails it a one in a one shot? You know, like like I I could watch cake videos all day and then go try to make the try to go recreate that cake and and it's not going to come out the same way. You know what I mean? I think we put so much pressure on on these eggheads and nerds of ours that that do these calculations and build these things. And we give them such high expectations because they are the smartest of, of us that everything's going to work out in a one shot. And and I don't have that, that, you know, kind of like expectations. You know, I've gotten a red ring of death on my Xbox. If we can't we can't build xboxes on launch day that that are going to last for years i really don't expect the first iteration of space travel and and all this stuff to kind of work out now do i do i expect them to like totally miss the mark and just fuck all kinds of shit up when they do it no i you know but there needs to be a certain percentage of error kind of expected with these things because that's how they work out the bugs that's how they get it perfect is is by trial and error yeah and yes there there is always some level of failure that that should happen right we just had uh spacex on their their starship you know blew the top off a couple weeks ago uh during some pressure testing and uh and we celebrated that uh this one was supposed to be like the bugs should have been worked out largely on this this is this was the last test to prove that they were going to put human beings in this next, right? the the very next launch of Starliner was supposed to to be manned. So th- this one was supposed to be pretty smooth, uh, and it just didn't go very smoothly. Uh, part of it just came down to what what Starliner and Boeing is saying is just some unlucky issues where uh, while it was in orbit, so it had a successful launch, it recovered its its boosters uh, successfully. The Starliner made it into made it into initial orbit. Uh, and then essentially the the computer system on the Starliner, whether it was a programming issue or whatever else, it started to to move itself into orbit in a, in a way that was unplanned, uh, and it burnt way too much fuel in order to do it. It it almost like read itself as it's in post mission, it's in its descent uh, rather than just getting it out to matching the ISS orbit. Well, in doing that, it burnt way too much fuel, and then it just didn't have enough fuel to get to the ISS orbit and then to return. So they had to essentially abort the mission at that point in time uh, and couldn't get it out there. And part of the the reason why they, they weren't able to f- correct it is because they had lost communication with it during that time frame. It was like a perfect storm of it was doing improper things at the right time where there was no communication to it, and they couldn't correct it from the ground. Had there been human beings on the, the Starliner... And in real time, could have corrected it. Right. They probably would have corrected it. They probably would have gotten to the ISS. So there was really no failure in it that was catastrophic. That that proved that it was unsafe. Uh, it was more of a programming issue, but still a, a costly, I'm sure, error uh, on their end as it had to return uh, a couple of days early. Never made it to the ISS, uh, and kind of showed some flaws again in uh, in programming, but really didn't probably serve as a test uh, necessary for them to move forward. So they're probably going to have to redo this test at some point in time next year. I'm sure Elon is secretly super happy uh, as they're ready to to test theirs, I think, next month in January. Uh, So I think they're looking to launch uh, their their Crew Dragon uh, next month. And... I'm sure they're just hoping to beat Boeing uh, in this this regard. Yeah, like I said, I just... Just fix it. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you find these bugs, take it back to the drawing board, fix it. I mean, how many, how many black and white videos of there are, are the of the Wright brothers just crashing and wrecking fucking planes <laughs> over, over and over and over again before they got that first, you know, hundred yard, three feet off the ground flight. You know, like it's it's the same kind of concept. You just you you can't you know, look at these as, as major failures. They are, they are, you know, in the technical word, they, it is a failure, but it's, it's part of the process, right? I mean, failure yeah. is the part of the process to success. Yeah. So we'll see if, uh, when, when bowling gets, a gets another shot at this, but, uh, another topic in, uh, in space news is, uh, 
we've got Amazon, who is they're now lobbying uh, really for for FCC approval to to use the satellite band. So all these low Earth uh, orbit satellites that we've been talking about, whether it's uh, Amazon's Kuiper or we've been talking about obviously Starlink, uh, you've also got OneWeb, a bunch of these companies that are are launching uh, these low Earth orbit satellites in order to provide internet. Well, they all require a, a very specific uh, frequency band that the FCC just opened up uh, for for people to to get get their piece of that that band. Starlink, they they registered the paperwork, they got their their band. OneWeb, they registered theirs as well as another dozen companies registered in time. Amazon, I don't know, some dude is Lex probably Luther. fired right now <laughs> because he just forgot to hit send on an email to the FCC or whatever else and didn't file uh, for the frequency band. Well, Amazon is lobbying to to get their FCC approval uh, for their Kuiper belt which you know they they have plans to start launching next year they wanted to test this internet system we talked about it last week uh that they've they're moving ahead with testing their internet system uh by summer of next year and you got guys like elon who are telling the government like no they they didn't wait in line like yeah you don't get to show up to the black friday sale and just say hey i missed it i still want those doorbuster deals no it's it's over <laughs> like it's one time one time sale there's a one time sale we to get got these. no more 80 inch tvs <laughs> yeah. pal they gone like they it, gone. it was there's no rain checks here like you get a one time sale and you missed you forgot to file the paperwork to get the frequency band that you needed to to operate your satellites come up with a new plan but your Elon and OneWeb, they want to see Amazon uh, froze out of uh, of getting into this business. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I wouldn't even call it dirty, kind of like business politics. I mean, they they have a point. Like we had to wait X amount of time to launch our shit because we needed government approval. Like Amazon, I mean, you give them a little bit of credit by saying it was probably some dude that forgot to send the email. I'm on the fucking tip that, you know, the bald Bezos was just in a boardroom slamming his fists on a table going, shoot the fucking satellites up. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Just put them in the fucking air. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> and if that's yeah. the case, yeah, no, fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah, I think I I think there's yeah, absolutely a case for for Elon Webb, all the people who followed the proper procedures to to just win this and Amazon, this whole Kuiper system for Amazon is going to have to use a different frequency spectrum that's less than desirable or they I scrap mean, the plan altogether. I don't know. You know, this is, this is like the, the space form of illegal immigration, man. You can't, you can't jump the line. You're going to have, <laughs> you're going to have people wanting to build space walls now. Like it's <laughs> it's going to get out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure we'll uh, we'll find out more of this because again we just talked about it last week that Amazon was moving forward with their plans and then this week you get uh, you get news that hey maybe Amazon can't move forward with their plans because they didn't properly uh, file so we'll uh, we'll find out more but uh, last space topic as uh, as we're, we're wrapping up here is the space force. It's finally it's created. It's finally it's, a thing. It's a thing. It, no it was a joke it, for a long yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> no longer is it just a theory. We officially have a Space Force. And uh, I want me a logo. I want to see this logo. Yeah. So, that, I mean, that's essentially now what has to happen, right? The they the the new spending bill was signed into law by uh by by President Trump there and a part of that spending bill, which it's, it's always so weird how these things play out. Like, how does, how does a new branch of the military the sixth branch of the military get created not through congressional act or whatever else but through a spending bill cool um <laughs> no biggie and, no biggie and you get the the space force getting created as the sixth branch it's going to be similar in design as what like the marine corps is now uh in the sense that the marine corps doesn't have its own secretary of the marine gonna, corps that's what i was going to ask so like the military or the marine corps is basically a branch of the navy yeah, so, so like, is this a branch of the air force it is uh so they're they're the the indi- the the initial individuals who are manning the space force are all people from the air force who are now being redesignated to the space force. The top general was announced uh, at, during the signing of the bill. The top general who's going to head up the space force is an air force general who's getting moved over uh, to head up the space force. A lot of what the air force already does is what the space force is doing. Um, so you're you're now just segmenting those missions from the air force and putting it into the space force uh, and. 
they, they've said that, yeah, now they've got to come up with their own rank structure. They've got to come up with their own logo. They've got to come up with their own motto. They even talked about they got to come up with their own theme song, right? The, everybody's got their yes. own hymn, their own. Fuck so yes. we're going to get, I'm hoping it's like 8-bit. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> like they're, they're going to do some branding and it's going to be like Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah. <laughs> some mumble rapper. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so they, now they've got to come up with yeah their own their own uh, march music or their theme song. So they, they're they're doing all of it. It's uh it's it's happening. Yeah, they all they all got locations, you know, from the shores of Montezuma, right? So <laughs> like, what are we gonna what are we gonna do? Like, how how is those lyrics gonna go? What are we gonna drop? You know, get get Kanye to produce it. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm all for this man and i'm curious uh to to see what the the overall design of the space force is going to be it, it has talked about that it's not it's it's a department of defense domain but it's not a like an offensive military domain the, the goal is not to weaponize space it's not to to come up with what it is is just to protect our satellite networks because we our military our defense strategy relies so heavily on on satellite-based communications and internet and gps that this is designed to protect yeah, those I assets mean, we talk about space so much and we can't just assume that everybody shooting shit in orbit is an honest player in 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 the world you know society so we 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 need some kind of um entity that that is looking out for you know at least us americans um to make sure that people aren't jacking our our satellite signals, people aren't shooting down satellites, people are, like it's space. We you know there was only a handful of people that were able to go to space you know prior to this generation. Now we're gonna have space tourism. Yeah, like space is a now thing. It used to be sea, land, and air. Well, space is now the fourth part. We 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 have so much access to outer orbit that man we we got to put a police station up there at some point yeah right now uh it has been said that the the mission is not in any way to uh to police space it's not even about asteroid defense or uh any type of like space defense it's it's purely about just the defense of of our current and existing systems uh and the protection of those those items in uh in spectrum so Again, I, I'm sure the mission of the Space Force will be will be better defined uh, over the next 12 months. It's it's supposed to get pretty much figured out. Uh, 12 months from from the signing of the bill is when the top general will start being represented at the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, so they'll, they'll pretty much still be rolled under the Air Force for the first 12 months. But then I'm, within, I'm buying within the 12 months, shirt the going. minute they come out with it, the minute they put the minute they slap that logo on a twelve dollar graphic tee at Target, I'm buying that motherfucker. <laughs> I'm all for it. I am curious to see what the logo is going to look like. So, uh, but hey, Space Force is there. So, hey, hey nerds, go ahead. Join and, now. And list. Join yeah, now. Recruit. Yeah, we're, we're, we're recruiting. We're recruiting. Air Force numbers are going to shoot up. I, I, I am curious on yeah what those. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to like the first recruiting commercial for the Space Force. <laughs> it's gonna. Be, it's gonna be. Well, great. I mean, we're gonna have. We're gonna have to have. You know, in the next decade instead of top gun type movies we're going to have space force yeah. type movies it's the military has always used cinema as a proper propaganda tool you yeah. know anytime you see movies with these army helicopters fighter jets and everything they're all on loan from the military and the military usually does it almost for free because they're just like man Make jets look cool. People want to fly jets. Yeah. And the only way you're going to fly a fucking jet is to sign on this dotted line right here, pal. So go ahead. Put this jet in a movie. My question is, do you bother with a boot camp for Space Force? Like, do you really oh, care? Sure. Do you really oh, care? Sure. I mean, yeah, but what is the boot camp? It should, it should be like typing class. It should be, a, no. it should, it should be like, like, they're not, the physical domain of those individuals, like, let's be serious. You're getting the biggest geeks and nerds that you can grab you don't want them to be in shape. You don't want them wasting their time running. This is that's not the purpose of the space force. Yeah, well, I don't know, man. Yeah, because we're all weightless in space. So, <laughs> but but Do those you, tubes, those tubes are really small. 
<laughs> like those those little passageway tubes and the space yeah, but, hatch doors. Like you can't have no fat fuck. Yeah, but that's clogging like, up clogging up the space hallway. You're talking about like the equivalent of like the Navy SEALs of Space Force, the people the people who might actually go to space. The vast majority of them are just going to be in the control centers down on Earth, and you. Man, I don't. I'm care. telling you, I see. I see in the next. By 20, 2040, we're gonna have a moon base. Like we're gonna we're gonna have these things. Like I'm telling you, it's just gonna ramp up and escalate every year that goes by. And as more and more people start getting into space, yeah, you're gonna have. You know, I just I don't know. I'm all for just America being fitter in general. <laughs> so if the only way we can do it is by mandating you know, fitness for, for government jobs. Like, man, I, I don't care. Brenda working at the DMV, put her ass through a fucking boot camp too. I don't give a shit. Like we are spending too much money on healthcare. If you got a government job, you got to do some PT motherfuckers. Like <laughs> my tax pay, my tax dollars are paying for your fucking health insurance. Put the fucking, put the donut down, Brenda, and go run a few fucking laps. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we're on body shaming, let's go to our, <laughs> let's go to our last topic here and uh, talk about the the Miss America. <laughs> this is no. This is a great story. <laughs> I love this with a, with a man with two daughters. Um, I th- I want more of this. Give me give me all of the scientist Miss Americas that we can handle. Um, for for those that don't know, uh, what her name is Camille Scryer Scryer Scryer. I don't know how you pronounce that. Yes. But um the current Miss America winner, her um special talent was biochemistry. And she did a science experiment on stage for for the entire judges to to critique and a scientist literally just won Miss America. So ladies, you can be beautiful <laughs> and smart and we will love you for it. Yeah, she uh she has a a crazy background or whatever she has uh, a, a dual she got dual bachelor's degrees in i can't remember the second one the first one was was in uh biology the second one it was like biological systems or, or something uh and and she's she's currently going to medical medical school or whatever else but yeah she's uh got definitely got a science background uh and and showed it off on stage and uh contributed towards her uh, her crowning of, of Miss America. Yeah, no yeah, so so all you pageant girls out there, we don't want to see your interpretive dance. Put the baton down. No, you know, like to quit singing. I let, let's, let's get more of this. Build some shit on stage. Blow some stuff up. Make some ooze. Like <laughs> like these are the things that we should be teaching our our young women that they are they're more than just a pretty body and with a, a with a nice voice. Now that, she, that's not all you need to do. Does she later get to correct people and and when they introduce her as Miss America, does she get to correct them and say Doctor America? Doctor Miss America, <laughs> motherfucker. Doctor America, Miss America. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. No, I just I just think this is great. You know, I I really I really want positive role models for my daughters you know so i look for them in in our society in our movies you know things people that they can want to emulate and and look up to and you know my one of my daughters right now is a little girly you know she's dainty she likes to she likes to dance she likes to look pretty you know but at the same time you can you know, this this is a woman that proves you could do both. You could you could want to be pretty. You could want to do these things, and at the same time, you can be a smart scientist and and do more than than what um is typically thought of as a a, a pageant person. Yeah. So that's uh that's it for our our weekly news here. As uh as we we hope you all enjoy your your holidays. If uh if you're listening to this later, enjoy your your new year. And uh, we'll we'll be here for for more news in uh, in 2020. Yeah, we got well, we got one more we got one more show before the n- next decade, right? I don't know. I, yeah, I, we'll record I, next Monday. Next Monday is like the 30th, I think. Yeah, I will be recording in 2019, but the next episode will release on New Year's Day. So we'll fucking time travel. <laughs> <laughs> so so after this one, we'll uh, we'll hear from you uh, in in 2020. 
But uh, thanks as always for for listening to uh, to the Nerd Cantina show. Uh, you know, we, we talked earlier in the episode about uh, hey, support us on Patreon if uh, if you can spare a dollar, if you can. Uh, it, it goes a long way towards towards helping us, uh, showing us who, who's uh, who's supporting us. We also are are trying to improve our uh, our Patreon exclusives. Uh, so if if you're interested in uh, some of these these full discussions uh, with with some of the the movies like the rise of skywalker uh that's going to be found over there on patreon yeah and and we we do put a lot of work into cramming some time in here we do uh spend a lot of time emailing for uh people for our guest spots and interviews and you know ken does a lot of editing and i do a lot of social media stuff so we we do put a lot of our time that our families are not quite happy with (laughs) so so to 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 have a few dollars in the Patreon account to even just buy a, a, a set of flowers to, to take the stress <laughs> off, off our end <laughs> from, from our spouses. Some, some supporter know, paid for flowers like, would be great. Like, like, like help a brother out. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, hashtag we ain't too proud to beg. Nope. And uh, thanks again for listening. And uh, we'll see you in 2020. Take care, nerds.